What do you think of when you hear the word consent? My guess, probably sex. And you're a lot like me if you think of sex and then start thinking about all the intricacies that come along with that word. Hi, I'm Clara Olvenis. I'm 17. I use she, her pronouns, and I teach sex ed. Now, you may be wondering, how does a 17-year-old end up teaching sex ed and having such strong opinions about consent for that matter? Well, I'm part of Planned Parenthood's Teen Council, a group of high school age students and our facilitator who work to teach sex ed and spread consent literacy in our communities. And while I won't be speaking on behalf of them today, I'm proud to say that that's where my love for all things consent started. The first thing we have to do is define consent. It sounds complicated, but really, it's simple. Non-consent is your coworker taking your lunch from the fridge because your name was on the back and they totally didn't see it. Non-consent is your mom sharing that not so flattering photo of you asleep on the couch in your band uniform. And non-consent is your boyfriend taking you to bed when you're four drinks in and he hasn't even had one. But consent is your friend asking for permission before changing their shirt in front of you your cousin asking to borrow your prom dress instead of just taking it straight from the attic. And consent is your girlfriend of six years still asking for permission before trying something new in bed. Consent is your strong, affirming yes. Consent is permission. Consent is trust. Consent is the blood of our relationships. Now, one easy way to understand consent is Planned Parenthood's Fry's model. In a sexual encounter, you want to be able to identify all five of these things with your partner. Freely given, reversible, informed, enthusiastic, and specific. Now, freely given means that there's no coercion or threats in place. If you or your partner feel unsafe saying no, it's not consent. This also applies to being under the influence of drugs and or alcohol. If you or your partner are inebriated in any way, it's also not consent. Reversible means that just because you said yes this morning, yes over text, or yes five minutes ago, doesn't mean you have to follow through now if you don't want to. Maybe you aren't feeling good, or maybe you just changed your mind. You're allowed to say no. The important thing to remember here is that things could be going great, fabulous even, and you are still allowed to change your mind. Now, informed means that you're not only informed of everything that's going to happen sexually, but you're also informed of any of the risks that may come along with it. Risks could be pregnancy, STIs, STDs, or really anything that comes along with sex in your relationship. Enthusiastic is a yes that means it. It's a yes where you aren't second guessing the amount of pause between your or your partner's agreement. And it's also the difference between a yes and a yeah, there should be no mistake when identifying an enthusiastic yes. Now, specific is important because just because you agreed to making out with someone doesn't mean you agreed to having your top taken off too. This, of course, can be amplified in more graphic sexual situations. For instance, agreeing to one sexual act, but not another. When seeking consent from someone, you want to be able to identify all five of these things. But when offering your own yes, you want to be able to reflect internally and see if these things are there for yourself. Consent is framed as a big, confusing, and quite honestly, oftentimes legal concept. But the reality is, you know exactly what it is. Your body knows exactly what it is. It's just that not all of us have the words and understanding to define it for ourselves. So why does any of it matter? And why am I speaking about consent today? Well, according to Rain, 463,634 people over the age of 12 are raped or assaulted every single year. Now, it's all well and good to look at this horrifically big number and feel sad. But it's important to know that every single one of these little ones, these little ticks to make up this number, is a human being and many of them were children. I was in eighth grade the first time I was made aware that someone was following me. 
I was in a Home Depot with my family and we were just there to buy lumber. A man started following me down the halls. I was barely 14. And it was only a few months later when I was shopping downtown with my mom and after we left one of the stores, she told me that the reason we had left was because a man had been staring at my chest. And it was only a few months later in the spring of eighth grade when I was called a whore and a slut for the very first time. I know what it feels like to have your body weaponized against you. It is the most out of control and terrifying experience that you can imagine. Every day, people are robbed of what is most truly theirs, their own body. So for me, consent is about owning my body, and I have. Over the past few years, I have found ownership and comfortability with my body, and through it, my life. This has stemmed from my deep understanding of consent. Consent is at the center of all of my relationships, platonic and romantic. And so the reason I teach sex ed is to help others own their bodies too. Bodily autonomy is paramount, and that is why I stand in front of you here today. So what does it mean to live in a world where consent is honored? Well, one of my wisest friends and Teen Council facilitator, Tim McLeod, explained this analogy to me. This is our consent iceberg. The tip of the iceberg outside of the water is everything we can know and see about a person. It could be something as simple as their name, as sexual as what they like in bed, or really just anything that you could get to know from spending five minutes with them. This massive part of the iceberg under the water is what we don't know. What the hardest parts of their day were, their relationship with their parents, if they've ever been raped or assaulted, if they have a traumatic relationship with sex, or if they have a traumatic relationship with their body. This is why we can never assume. We never know what our partners are carrying with them. So this iceberg can be something as small as your partner not having a stomach ache and not wanting to have sex because of it. Or it could be something as big as a rape that occurred previously. My definition of living in a culture of consent is to move through my everyday life visualizing this iceberg because the consent is bigger than your bedroom. It's all of those little consent moments we talked about earlier. You deserve to live in a world where your no is respected unconditionally. And so do I. We all do. So begin by offering that same respect to those around you and learn how to handle it when you're told no. Because at the end of the day, no one owes their body to anyone else and we are each the own, our own first steps to creating a culture of consent in our lives and then spreading it through to our community. So now it's time to figure out what it means for you. Whatever the reason, you need to find it. It could be something as small or as big as you want. It could be that you wanna feel free in your body. It could be that you want your partner to be in a relationship where they're never afraid. Or it could be that you want the world to be a place where no one has their sexual autonomy taken from them. Whatever the scope of your reason, you need to find it. And maybe it's a bunch of little things all put together, and maybe it changes every day. It doesn't matter. You need to figure out what it means to you. So, keep talking. And you know, I talk about consent a lot. Yes, it's my job. But I'm also the friend who's definitely going to bring it up to you before 9 a.m. So keep talking, and talk to kids. If you're ever interested in being humbled when it comes to talking about consent, talk to a kid. They are so much smarter than you even realize, and they'll bring up situations that you never even thought to consider. So keep talking, and talk to your kids. Talk to your parents. It is never too early nor too late to begin talking about consent. A consent conversation can be modified to be age appropriate for anyone. So keep talking and look for consent in your relationships, however they form, romantic, sexual, platonic. Consent is important to talk about because it is at the very basis of our relationships. Thank you.